Hello, I'm Carolyn from CuttingTime.Blogspot.com. In this video, I'm going to show how you can create a basic quatrefoil design. Then I'm going to use tile clones to make a repeat pattern. I'm going to start the design by selecting the circle. Hold down the control key on the keyboard so you get a circle and not an oval. Now if I look on the lower left, I can see that my circle has got a dark blue fill and a black stroke line. Now when I'm creating designs like this, I prefer to work with just a stroke line and no fill. So I'm just coming back to fill. I'm just going to right click on the color. I get some more options. I'm going to take the one at the bottom, which is remove fill. Now if I look at the width of my stroke line, I can see it's 5.31 px. I'm going to change this to millimeters so I can understand the sizing a bit better. You do have three options here. You've got PX, PT and millimetres. So it's a personal choice as to which unit of measurement you work with. But for this project, I'm selecting millimetres. Now I can see when it's in millimetres that my stroke width is 1.5. If you want to make it thicker, just right click on the actual number and you've got some more sizes here. So I might just change this to two so it's a little bit easier on the video to see what I'm doing. What I'm going to do now is duplicate this circle. So you can press Ctrl D, but as I use my mouse, I like to just click on the icon for duplicate. So I'll just click on that. Can't see any changes, but there are two there, one sitting on top of the other. What I'm going to do now is just use the arrow keys on my keyboard and move it down to where I want it to be. I think round about there. Now I can see that the lower circle is selected. I'm going to hold down the shift key on the keyboard and select the top circle as well. While they're both selected, I'm going to go path union. What we're going to do now is duplicate this again. So once again, I'll click on the icon for duplicate. And I've got two of these shapes. One is on top of the other. Now I need to rotate it. I want to rotate it 90 degrees. And I find the easiest way is just click on these icons. This one's for clockwise. And this one's for counterclockwise. For this project, it really doesn't matter which one of these two you select. So just click on one of them. You can see it's rotated. Now at this stage, you could even save this. I'll just duplicate it and put it aside. And I can use that for, to create another design. So let's come back to this one. I've got one of the shapes selected. I'll hold down the shift key and select the other one. Then I'm going to go path union. Now if I was going to print this, I've got this nice black line that will print. But if I'm going to cut it, it's just going to cut one single line. I want it to cut both sides of the line. So I'm going to make a slight change here. Let's just go to outline mode so you can see what happens. See in outline mode, this black line here is a path that your cutter blade will follow. And I want it to look like it was on the screen when it was black. So what I will do, as it is a stroke line, I will go path, stroke to path. We can see I've now got two lines. Let's just do the same with this one here and we can use this one later on. I'll go path, stroke to path. So we've got the double lines. Then I can go path, union. Let's just come back to normal view. We can see we've now got a design. I can cut that out as is. And here's the other one that we're actually going to work with. I'm going to show how you can use tiled clones to create a repeat pattern. And these are the next steps I will be showing. I'll zoom out a bit so we can see what we're doing here. Move that right out. We'll just bring this up in the corner. While the object's selected, we'll go Edit, Clone, Create Tiled Clones. And now we get some more options. What I would advise, down in the lower left, hit the reset button. That way if you've changed settings under all these tabs, they will now return to default. Symmetry, I'm going to leave it P1, simple translation. Shift, at Shift X in column, I'm going to change to a minus number. And at Shift Y in row, I'm going to change to a minus number. So if I want to keep this design square, which I do, I'm going to change this box and this box to maintain the proportions. So on my keyboard, I'm just going to type in minus two, press enter. 
same here, press minus 2, press enter. Now a lot of this is trial and error. I've entered minus 2, your measurements might need to be different. It will depend on the size of your original shape and how much you want them to overlap. So let's just click on create and see how it looks. See here, I've actually only got 6 by 6 and I want this to be 12 inches. Now there's two ways I can do this. I can either guess how many I need to go across or instead of having rows and columns here I can tick this little box here width and height and I can actually enter a measurement here. You can see I've got it on millimeters that is actually 12 by 12 inches. If you don't believe me there we go 12 inches by 12 inches. Now it won't be exact to 12 inches. It does save a lot of guesswork so I don't have to undo or anything else while this original shape is still selected which I can see it is here all I have to do is click on create. We can see that it's actually given me a little bit more than what I need. While this original one is still selected, I can make as many changes as I want here and just click create. So if I change my mind and think, no, I preferred six by six, I can just click on create and it will change it. Change the numbers to 10, click on create. Oh, that made it easy. I can see 10 is too, too many, so I'll go eight by 8, click on create and that is going to fit on 12 inch page. So as long as you've got this box open and the original shape is selected you can make as many changes as you want. When you're finished just close the box. If you've watched any of my previous videos on tile clones I have gone through these steps and explained it but in case you haven't I'll go through it again. That the one selected is the original and it is underneath the tile clones. Now all of these clones are linked to the original. I can't join these together until they're unlinked. Now one of the easiest ways to unlink them is just to delete the original. They are now unlinked. Now occasionally, you know, you might be doing something else in your project and click elsewhere on the screen and lose where the original is. Now if I click back here, that is not the original. It is one of the clones sitting on top of the original. The easiest way is just select all of the shapes. This little icon up here of a padlock that's unlinked, if you click on that it will break the connection and these shapes will then be individual so they'll no longer be linked. So they're now all individual so I can go ahead now and join these together which in Inkscape is path union. Let's just have a look in outline mode. So we can see at the moment these are overlapping each other so I'll go path Union. Now if you have a lot of shapes this might take a little while. You can see they're now all joined. So when I cut this out this will actually be one piece. One thing I did forget to mention earlier in the video and I'll just show with this one here. We'll just delete that and we'll come back to this shape. If the number of nodes are an issue with your machine and the speed of cutting you want to reduce the number of them now. I'll just double click so we can see the nodes. Now there aren't too many in this but some designs you're doing there might be a lot of nodes. You don't want to repeat them all across the page and then realize you have to reduce nodes. It is much easier to do it to one than it does a page full of them. So before I finish the video let's just go through those steps again. So we've got our basic design. We'll go edit, clone, create tile clones. Symmetry will state P1 simple translation. Shift. Now then, this is the same size as the other one so the same settings should work. So let's just have a look. Here we have it, they have. But if I decide, oh that's a bit too much for a page, I would like it to be just one strip. So I can just go 1 by 8, click on create and then I'm going to have a nice border design. Or if I decide it's for a card, or I can make it two, click on create. And then when I'm happy with the design, just close this box. The original is selected. I'll go delete, select everything, go path, union. So in this video I've shown the repeat pattern with a quatrefoil base design, but you can use any shape and do the same thing. The main advantage with using tile clones is each shape is a clone therefore it is identical to the original. So if you use Inkscape to create designs for your cutter 
and you like repeat patterns and border patterns, you might like to try tile clients. Thank you.